introducing the intermediate signals. Right here we have a pair of bracketed triangular three light signals. And we have just finished reinstalling the circuitry for them. So they are now functional. These signals also have the approach light theme. And let's take a look at the circuitry to these signals. Okay, what we're looking at here is the control circuitry for the eastbound intermediate signal. Um, I will point to certain components on here and kind of give you an idea as to what they do. These little guys right here are your transistors. These are the basic building blocks for the circuitry. These right here are diodes. And then of course you got your resistors. Um, these three sets of transistors right here control which light is displayed based on the inputs, whether it be red, yellow, or green. These right here will give you the appropriate output. These three right here control the approach lighting theme as well as this one. It's actually just these two that control the colors. This one, as well as these three, control the approach lighting. When the approaching block is lit or occupied by the train, these three transistors, I'm, I'm sorry, these four transistors are what cause the signal to light up. And it's only lit for the approaching block. This right here is what interlocks the signal to the preceding interlocking signal which I will go into detail about that later but this is what gives the signal a yellow aspect when the switches are set to the appropriate now let's take a look at the other circuit here we have the other circuit except the difference between this one and the other one is this one is on a completed proto board the other one still needs to be soldered together. The operation is the same as this one, except this one is not interlocked with a preceding signal in the manner shown before. Um, this one is a distant signal because the next signal is an interlocking. But the yellow to this one is controlled strictly by the red output of the preceding signal. But anyways, enough with the technical blabber. Let's take a look at the bracketed signals themselves. Here's a look at the bracketed signals in the NYC triangular style. The signal facing towards the camera is the eastbound intermediate, what I refer to as the eastbound. The signal facing away is the westbound intermediate. And as you can see, this needs a paint job but the paint will have to wait till later on. Let's take a look at these bad boys in action. Okay, if you have a look right here, I have switch R1 set for the train to take the main line or the diverging route. But in this case, the diverging route is the main line. Now, if the switch were to set to be straight, the train would head down into the yard over there. As you can see, that's a dead-end track. So, let's take a look at how the preceding intermediate signal will act based on the switch setting and the train motion. Okay, I'm going to run an eastbound train. Now, keep in mind of the switch setting I showed you just a minute ago. And we're going to watch how this signal will behave based on that setting. So, here we go. Now as the train enters the approaching block, the signal comes on as a green. And once the train passes it, it goes to red. And now that the train is out of the block, the signal will 
time out and once the circuitry times out the signal will go off. And that's the operation of the intermediate when the main line is thrown, when the switch is thrown for the main line. Now let's take a look at what happens when it's thrown towards the yard. Now as you can see I've lined my switch for a train to take the movement into the yard. So as you can see the yard down there. And let's take a look at that intermediate signal with the switch now lined for the yard. The operation of the intermediate for a train approaching the yard. Now because the switch is lined for the yard movement, the signal should display a more cautious aspect in the form of a yellow. This tells the engineer he has, has an approach because he'll be entering the yard which is a restricted speed. Once the train passes it, again, goes to red. And with the engines out of the block, the circuitry will time out once it times out signal to turn to an off state. Now let's take a look at the signal when we reverse the direction of travel. Alright, now we are going to run a westbound move. We're going to see how this eastbound signal reacts to a westbound movement. Keep in mind the current in the rails is reversed, so when this train approaches the signal it should come on as red because of the reverse in current. And the track detector detects this. The track detector is what determines the reverse in current, therefore occupying the block. And we got our train coming around, and the signal won't come on until the train enters the approaching block. And the bottom is red. signal will not upgrade from a stop until either A, I turn the power off to the block, or B, I reverse this current going to that block. Signal will return to off. So now that you've seen the eastbound intermediate, let's take a look at the westbound intermediate. 